As many of you know, when I was growing up, I was you know, a pretty chunky kid and you know, I really struggled with my weight. And something that I think might have contributed to that was the speed at which I ate my food. So I would just throw down food like a bird just and just swallow it, right? I wouldn't even think about what I was eating. And so I wasn't really very mindful of what I was eating. And so I would finish up eating and I would want to eat more, right? I would never know if I was full and I never gave myself the chance to do that because I would rush through the whole process. Well, it turns out that a lot of people also have that problem. And so today, we're gonna talk all about that. What is up, people? Jean Carlos here with the Total Body Training Podcast where I help people get lean, gain muscle, and build some tan confidence. And today's topic is mindfulness and eating. The idea of mindfulness is something that has been really popular nowadays because nowadays it's, it's kind of in style to talk about mindfulness because of the popularity of things like yoga and meditation. We have apps that really help us with all of this. And I think that's really phenomenal. The first time though that I had heard of this mindfulness eating practice was when I was in college. And you know, it really stuck out to me because I heard about it and I could relate to it. So my professor, I, I, I took this class called mental training where we actually learned how to meditate. I got really lucky to have this doctor, this professor named Dr. Michaelis. And you know, right now the tips that I'm gonna tell you are tips that Dr. Michaelis gave us. And I'm sure that he got inspired by by other people. So you know, and the way that this might relate to you is that it turns out that a lot of people who have a little bit more to love might be rushing through how much they're eating and not recognizing when they're overeating. You know, I don't know how true that is, but I do feel that that was the case for me. I do feel that when I was younger, part of the reason why I struggled with my weight is because I ate my food way, way too quickly. I don't know why I would do that, but it's something that I would do. And, you know, maybe in, in cases when I would get stressed out, sometimes I would be like, you know, oh, I'm going to go eat a pizza. And I would eat the whole damn thing or like a lot of it by myself. And I wouldn't even taste the food that I was eating. I wasn't even mindful of it. And then at the end of it, I would feel sick and my stomach would feel full because I wasn't actually like focused on what I was eating. And, you know, Dr. Michaelis would, would, would bring up and he'd always talk to us about mindfulness. Dr. Michaelis would say things like, you know, um, you know, getting away from food here, he'd say, you know, have you ever been reading a book and you're reading the book and then all of a sudden you're thinking about something else. So your mind is trailing off to something that your mom said or something that your dad said or, you know, that, that chick at the store, you know, the way she looked or something that has nothing to do with the page. You get done with the page and suddenly you don't know what you were reading. Suddenly you're completely lost, right? Has that ever happened to you? Or have you ever been driving somewhere and you are just somewhere else mentally and you somehow get home but you're like you barely remember how you drove there right we're not talking about temporary amnesia we're just talking about not being like clear and being in the here and the now and being present so you know being mindful in all aspects of your life is something that can really benefit you and i think can make you happier as a person now on our side here on our channel we're going to be talking about how mindfulness can help you out with your eating and actually tasting and enjoying your food and making sure that you can maybe hopefully eat to a point where you don't overeat. That's the idea here with eating mindfully. And um, you know, you might find that through mindful eating, you actually start to enjoy your food better and you savor it more because you're not just throwing it down like a pelican. So, <laughs> which I can say because I am guilty of this and if I'm not careful, I'll still do this today. Just ask my girlfriend. So, <laughs> so here are the tips that I remember Dr. Michaelis going over us with us when I was in college. And uh, Dr. Michaelis, I hope I'm doing you some justice here. All right. So essentially, these were his recommendations and, you know, I stand by them. They're things that I do. And, you know, before I go into them, I'm going to tell you one good way to be mindful with your eating is to completely go somewhere to eat alone. This is the, the, the time that I did it, uh, the first time that I did this, I went to a restaurant, a sushi restaurant that I can't remember its name that was in uh, the town that I grew up in in Florida. And I sat down, because I love the food there, and I went all by myself, I got a booth in a quiet corner, I requested that, and I requested several items, I got tea, I got uh, an appetizer, I think it was edamame, and I got myself 
uh, sushi because I love good sushi and I believe that was my whole meal and you know I followed a certain sequence with how I ate and that's what I'm going to share with you which were the tips that Dr. Michaelis gave you. So I think a uh, one way to practice my point here to practice mindful eating is to get alone and find something that you like to eat and follow these steps, right? So step number one, look at your food. Your food, if you're, if you're someone who likes a variety of different styles of food, not if you're picky, you, you might not have this experience. So if you're just eating chicken tenders and fries, which are great, <laughs> you know, you, you might not have the same experience as someone who likes a variety of foods, uh, who's a little bit more uh, open-minded with <laughs> how they eat. And, uh, you know, so, so look at your food. You know, sit down with your plate of food and uh, your drink or whatever and actually observe what it looks like. If you have some kind of beverage, right, look at the color of the beverage. Is it a hot beverage? Is there steam coming off of it? I remember that when I got tea, right, and I set down my tea and noticed that it has these little vapors coming out of it. And just look at that and just, you know, be amazed with it, right? Isn't that something that's so incredible? Aren't we so lucky that we have the opportunity to drink this tea or you drink this coffee that's hot and then feel the sensation of that, right, in your hands, the feeling of like that hot tea in your hands, pour it into the cup, watch the, the, the tea like pour in there or the drink, whatever you get and just look at it and kind of swig it back and forth and look at it and, and then, you know, just, you know, then look at your food, right? Look at your food and look at all the wide array of colors that are in there. If you get something, some kind of food that, that's interesting to look at, like say sushi, right? Sushi can be very interesting and very beautifully laid out. It's almost like an art, right? You can see the different colors of the different speckles of the fish or the, the things that they put in the, the, the seaweed or the, the rice and the variety of sauces that come along with it. Really like observe the care and compassion that went into making that food and the way that it looks. And you know, through the process, process of it, you might see things that you've never seen in the food that you're looking at. Because a lot of times like we look at it, we look at like pretty foods on like Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that, but we don't really observe it. We look at it for a few minutes and we identify that it tastes, that it looks good and therefore it must taste good, but we're not really like looking at it like it's this beautiful painting. And really like food can be that, especially for us in, in this country right now, right? It, with, with, with a lot of us having the, being somewhat affluent, right? Some of us um, or having the money to go out and taste nice and tasty foods and have experiences. Why not sit down, look at your food, observe it before you eat it and really appreciate what it is. Look at the colors, look at the steams, look at the heat that's coming from the food. You can usually see that, right? Coming off your food. You can see the warmth coming off of it. Um, so like take a look at that, okay? Uh, really observe your food. Now, uh, you know, another thing that you can do is you can also smell the food. So like people who are sommeliers in wine or people that are even coffee salon sommeliers, they're, they're professional people in tasting and identifying what is inside the food that they're drinking right? The, the drink that they're drinking, the beverage that they're drinking. And we can also kind of be a sommelier of, and I don't even know if I'm using this word in the right context, but we can be, we, we'll, we'll try it anyways, a food expert, so to speak, right? We can learn to smell and anticipate how something's going to taste before we even taste it or identify what's in a food without knowing what's in it by tasting it or by smelling it first. So like, uh, you know, look at your food, smell it, how does it smell? Does it smell warm? Does it smell fresh? Does it smell tasty? You know, does it smell salty? Does it smell fatty? Like all these really nuanced things are things that people who are food experts observe about their food before they actually sit down and they entice their mind and they entice how they feel. They get primed and excited about what they're going to eat. And so we're creating this mindfulness and we're considering how we're going to go about eating this food and how much we're going to enjoy it, right? We're really building anticipation. That's what we're doing here. We're building anticipation and also just like a genuine appreciation of what we're about to eat. We're more connected to it if we look at it and then we smell it and we really take our time with that. Now, you know, from there you can even, I, I don't think that Michael has said this, but you can play with it. <laughs> you're not supposed to play with your food, John. Well, it depends on how you're doing it. So like you can take your fork and you can pick it up and feel the cold steel, right? The sensation of that steel from the fork, or it could be a plastic fork, feel the plasticky BPA-ness, <laughs> joke, side joke, uh, from that plastic. And 
you know, move around the sushi roll or, you know, if, if it's a, a slice of pizza, pick it up and like feel the warmth in your hands, right? Move it around. You know, that's what I mean by play with it. It doesn't mean like make a sand castle or a pizza castle out of the pizza you get or stack up your sushi in a certain way. I don't mean that. I mean, like play with it, look at it, feel it, like touch the food that you're about to eat. Or, you know, if it's like lasagna, obviously you're not going to put your hands in that, right? <laughs> That'd be kind of gross, but you get the point, right? You can move it around and look at it. So really observe what you're doing and be mindful and have a good time. Play with the situation is what I'm saying. I hope that you get what I mean by that one, especially you, Dr. Mikeulis, if you're watching. Um, <laughs> the next one is going to be eat slowly. So eating slowly is the biggest one uh, that I have a problem with. And I would say that people who struggle a little bit with being overweight have a problem with. I don't know this for a fact, but it seems to be the case that, you know, that is the situation that people do rush through their eating process. So, you know, eat more slowly. How do you eat more slowly? You take small bites. If don't just throw it back, right? If you eat, let's say a slice of pizza, take a small bite, like use the front of your teeth, the side of your teeth, the inside teeth, the back of your teeth, really go through the whole chewing process. What does this do for you? Well, you know, as food goes back along your tongue, different aspects of your mouth get activated uh, taste buds. I don't really know the science behind this, but like, you know, your tongue, which is where you get a lot of your, your tasting from, I, I suppose, experiences different things. And your teeth are designed to do different things in the chewing and eating process, which help with the digestion process. So if you're taking huge bites and you're just swallowing, then the food isn't really compressed down to the way that it should be when you are processing it in your stomach. So, you know, apparently that's not so great for your your stomach. I'm not really sure why. There is a book by Marie Roach uh, about your uh, digestive system. I can't recall the name of it right now. I'll post it in here, but she kind of goes over that in that book. Her books are interesting. She has a book called Bonk and she has some other ones, but I'm digressing. Anyways, if you want to learn more about that, you're going to want to Google her, Marie Roach. But, um, you know, each and every bite, you know, is an experience and it gives you a window into a different way of perceiving and understanding your food. So, you know, through that whole process and taking your time, you might find that you enjoy your food more than ever. It's this sensory exploratory experience that you might have never had with that sushi or with that pizza. And by the end of it, because you have to go through this process so slowly, you might find that you're full. Right? Whereas in the past, if you just piled down that whole slice of pizza and that slice of pizza with the soda and the drink and stuff like that, you might overeat in the process. That's definitely what I would do and then feel sick afterwards. So feel like, man, I stuffed my face. It's like maybe if you'd eaten more slowly and more mindfully, you would know or recognize when you're actually full and not pass that limit. And so, you know, that's one of the goals of why I'm sharing this with you on here. And it's also just one of the the things that I am constantly striving to get back to, which is really enjoying my food. I think food is something that's really special and really enjoyable. And, you know, that is why we have this culture of people who like to take Instagram photos and we have, you know, people who call themselves foodies and, and you know, food pornographers, food food porn on, on the internet. It's because food is so pretty and so enjoyable. Let's treat food the way that it's meant to be. Let's enjoy it and really savor each and every bite. Now, I know that we're not always going to be able to do this. When you go out with friends and family, you're at a party, you're not going to be able to slowly eat your piece of pizza, right? But like, you know, just keep in mind that you also don't have to rush in those situations. You can slow it down a little bit and really taste, right? I always envy people who take longer to eat their food because I can tell that they're really enjoying it. You know, do I have this perfectly down in my experience? No. Sometimes I still struggle with it, you know, from years of bad habits, I suppose. But, you know, I am better than I was years ago and, uh, you know, I definitely feel fitter as a result, I think, in part of doing this. All right, people. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this episode of the Total Body Training Podcast. Until next time, peace.